Welcome to the Chi-Squared Test in SPSS video presentation. My name is Dr. Janine Allwright, and I'm an instructional specialist at the Academic Skills Center. In this brief video, I will show you the two-way Chi-Squared Test, also known as the Test of Independence. A Chi-Squared Test is a non-parametric test that we use to examine a possible relationship between two nominal variables. If you are working with variables that are measured at a different level of measurement, then I highly recommend using a more appropriate test. I will show you how to create a cross tabulation in SPSS and to produce the chi-squared test results. I will also briefly talk about an assumption of this test and interpret the chi-square. And should we find significance, I will interpret the strength of the association as well. For the purpose of this video, we will be working with this brief scenario. A female college student is interested in learning more about a possible relationship between gender and home ownership. We will use the chi-square analysis to determine if there is a significant association between these two nominal variables. Now let's move to SPSS to see what the variables look like when they are set up in a data set. And here is our data set. We can see that both gender and home ownership have been set up as nominal variables. Gender is measured with two options, either male or female, one or two. And home ownership is measured with rent or buy, also one and two. When we perform a chi-square test with two variables that are both measured with two levels, we will create a two by two cross tabs table. And if we look at the data view, we can actually see how many participants fit within each combination of those levels of the variables. For instance, 918 men rent, 1,531 men own a home. For females, 928 rent, and 1,623 females own a home. This frequency distribution is quite handy because it will allow us to weigh the cases. That is a process we first go through before we run the chi-square test. To weigh the cases, click on data and select the bottom option and move the frequency variable into the weigh cases box. Click OK and we are now ready to run the test. Click on analyze, select the descriptive statistics option and the cross tabs. We are now ready to move gender into the rows and home ownership into the columns. And we do not use the frequency anymore because we've already used that part for our weight cases process. We click on statistics, ask for the chi-square and the phi and Kramer's V. And we select the expected counts from this option box. And now we're ready to run the test. The test results show us that the total sample size is 5,000. We can see that that includes 2,449 males and 2,000 551 females. When we ran the test, we asked for the expected count. We will use the expected count to evaluate an important assumption. There is never a simple answer to the question of what sample size is large enough, but we know that for a table with two rows and two columns, the expected count in all the cells ought to be greater than five. And here at the bottom of the chi-square table, it is written how many cells have an expected count less than five. In our case, that is 0%. That percentage should be under 20%. If you have an expected count for more than 20% of the cells, the results of this chi-square test are not valid. We do not have a problem with the expected count, so we, we may proceed. The Pearson's chi-square comes out to 0.657 which is paired with a p-value of 0.418, which is greater than 0.05. So we did not find an association between the two variables. In this situation, when the association is not confirmed, we do not interpret the strength of the association. 
This completes our SPSS presentation and it completes our video. We do offer a academic guide that shows you how to write up the chi-square results in APA format and you can find this guide on our website at the Academic Skills Center under the button Tutoring and Statistics. Thank you for viewing the chi-square test in SPSS video presentation. Thank you.